give it away necessarily, but I was thinking that we could tweet this one at Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, the NPH. It's a very NPH episode. The real NPH. Is that what is... That's something like that. Okay. We should probably look that up before we just start speculating well, wildly here. Well, that's how Twitter works, is you just hold up your phone and you push out, NPH, Neil, Twitter. And then it, and it tweets at him? And that's, what, that's how you tweet. Is that how the internet works? That's Well, that's how you tweet. Okay. I, I think I just tweeted my pants. This is Himium Superfans. Hey there, Chris Venezia. Hello, James Hamilton. And hello to all our mother fans out there. This is the show where we make fun of the CBS comedy, How I Met Your Mother. And today, we're especially going to ruin it for you. We're going to ruin it, and we're going to ruin plot points for the entire series. Actually, I don't think I'm going to ruin it today. Oh. Change your mind on the whole ruining it thing? <laughs> yes, all of a sudden. Uh, even though we're only doing the first season, we will have spoilers for the rest of the show. So if you don't want to know that in 2029, Marsh Gammon is the first game to surpass Monopoly in annual sales since 1963, then maybe come back to this podcast once you've watched the whole series. It's uh, Aldrin Games. Aldrin Games, yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought that uh, that would have been the app that would be the killer app for VR? Yeah, even better than uh, the VR for SlapBet. Yeah. Virtually slap your friends. Mm Mm-hmm. So in this episode, we're talking about Game Night, a.k.a. Peace out, hombre! Yeah, it's uh, Season 1, Episode 15, if you want to watch after this. Originally aired in February on the 27th in 2006. It was written by Chris Harris. Who directed this one, Chris? It was directed by Pam. Stop tweeting at us, Fryman. Uh, yeah, it's not going to happen, Fryman. <laughs> so in this one... Uh, We learn about Barney's origin story, and we also learn that Marshall's good at games, and it's also like the first time that Victoria's hung out with the group. Yeah, that is true. We got to see her in the last episode. It was mostly her and Ted on the couch, and Mm -hmm. even though there should have been time for them to get to know each other, like uh, Victoria and the gang, hasn't happened yet. So, context, we said Ted's been dating Victoria for a while, Robin still has feelings for Ted. Uh, She takes it out on Victoria from time to time. Uh, Barney's had a few human moments so far in the show. He was a little pensive in the limo. And we got to see him in the Sweet Taste of Liberty. Right. Uh, You know, get to be a a person. You're my best friend, okay? Right. But we finally get his origin story. Right. Yeah. So what was most memorable for you? Where's the tape? (laughs) Where's the tape? Where's the tape? And then not only that line, but like... That very identifiable laugh track that comes immediately after it, where there's that one woman in the audience who's like, ha ha! <laughs> like, I might edit that out of the podcast because it just blew out the levels. But... <laughs> See if you can leave it in there somehow. At home, it, it's, it's, a, it's an approximation of, of the feeling of that particular laugh track. Yeah, the laugh track in this one was really, was really um, I don't know, prominent. To me, as, as was, like, the actors' faces. It was, like, a lot of silence. Well, a lot of uh, non-dialogue. A lot of people's faces, the actors' faces, like, telling the story. Yeah. And then a laugh track. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they get some criticism for doing the laugh track, and sometimes I think they really deserve it. Most of the time, I think they do a really good job. It's, it's not noticeable. But this time, um, no, it, it, it was pretty obvious. Yeah. So what, what do you remember? Actually, my most memorable moment is the transformation, uh, where Barney turns into Darth Barney. Darth Barney. And they've got the like the dark music. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, how does this one start? Uh, this one's got a really, really short intro. They. Yeah, I noticed that. I'm, I'm, I watched it on Netflix, and the opening is like really short. It was like three seconds long. It's the same on DVD, so I, I guess they really wanted those 52 seconds back. Which is funny, because I don't think this episode is jam-packed with enough stuff uh, to, to need that extra few seconds back. Like I said, a lot of this is in the actors' faces, in my opinion. If, if anything, it's, it's such a Barney-heavy episode that 
you know, what we know about Neil is that he, at least for this show, uh, is, has a reputation for really going over the top and, and giving a lot of takes. So maybe they cut that 52 seconds of the intro out to, for more Barney time. More Barney. A little Barney. So, in this one, Future Ted tells his kids that Marshall has always been good at games. And we do get to see this later in other episodes when Marshall helps Barney play the Chinese games, yep. like the gambling, uh, one of which has a jelly bean, mm-hmm. he used to find. Yeah, it, it's his uh, skill with game and Barney's uh, gambling addiction come back to save the day. Right, yes, exactly. So, some of the games that uh, Marshall is good at that we know of are Yahtzee. And poker, right. which he plays like Yahtzee. Yeah, you don't, don't have to say poker. So at the bar, Marshall lets everyone know that he invented a game for game night. Uh, and uh, why is there a dog on his shirt? Why is there a dog on his shirt? Really upset you. It's so weird. It's, and it's so obvious. And it's there for the whole episode. <laughs> I don't, can't stop looking at it. I don't ever recall seeing Marshall in this shirt before or after. But, you know, the only explanation I can um, come up with is Marshall's in a secret yacht club. But instead of wearing one of those preppy golf shirts with a little alligator on it, Mm -hmm. it's a giant dog. So he's in a giant dog yacht club. Okay. Okay. That's canon. (laughs) Because the other one, the other guys are in a secret alligator yacht club? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right, go ahead. And... So, since the gang is at the bar, Lily says, "I'm so happy that Victoria's going to be there." And at the mention of her name, Robin gets up and leaves the booth. Yeah, uh, it, it it is pretty obvious, and uh, Lily even takes notice of it. Uh, but Ted asks Barney, Lily, and Marshall to be on their best behavior. And uh, I find this odd, because like I said, Vic- Victoria should have already been around for a while. They should right. have already gotten all of the uh, um, interrogation yeah. out of the way. The Let's go ahead and embarrass Ted, which is what Barney ends up trying to do this right. episode. And and Robin has a problem with Victoria, She's but she's known her enough to say, oh, she's great, she's fun, she's free and spirited, she's great, she's great. And like if she had never met Victoria before game night, then why would she have those things to say about her? Right, so they have spent some time together, but I guess we haven't seen it, so since it's the first time the audience is seeing it, it's the first time it's happening. Yeah. You should mention, though, that Barney is, since this is a Barney episode, Barney is hurt that Ted would ask him to not embarrass him, you know, Mm -hmm. be on your best behavior. One of the um, jokes that uh, I think doesn't get enough uh, replay is the uh, fake phone call, uh, where he calls the leg warehouse. Yeah. Any, yeah. Anything stand out? No, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I do like that, the leg warehouse. They had nothing for Ted to stand on. No. I wish that had come back, too. Yeah. So, uh, Barney's going to use his knowledge of the re-return uh, to torture Ted all night. Now, we all know what the re-return is, but, of course, none of the other characters do. So, according to the pilot episode, what we think is the end of Ted's night with Robin is he should have kissed her, they go back to the bar, and they drink champagne. Right. But and there's then more. We, it pans up, the camera pans up, and then, and then they, they, they cut, that's the end of the episode. Yeah. They all went home and went to bed. Yes. Or did they? Or did they? We find out that they didn't. Since it's such a Barney head of the episode, I'm going to keep harping on him. I wanted to know, Chris, what you think. Is is Barney like actually hurt that Ted says be on your best behavior, or is he trying to teach Ted a lesson, like, you've got to be honest with her, or is he just trying to deflect attention from himself because he almost pulled the naked man on Robin not one episode ago? Right, it could be it could be any of those things. And I actually, I wonder, because it's such a dick move uh, to, to bring up the re-return. Like, clearly, I think that Ted's in the wrong. He should have told Victoria already. And I think that he's he's not being as good to her in this relationship, as honest with her as he can be, and I think that's not cool. But it's not your friend's job to bring that up. Like, that's Ted's responsibility to, to deal that, deal with that and do that when, like, when in his own time without prompting or without Barney, you know, bring it up. So it seems like, uh, like a really, like, jerk thing to do. But, uh, yeah, like, maybe, maybe he's trying to sabotage the relationship. Like, 
Barney, we know that he prefers Ted to be single. Yeah. I mean, he's made that very obvious. So maybe he doesn't like Ted being with Victoria. Like, he's tolerating it. Uh, he has already complained to Robin that Ted's not around as much right. anymore in the, in the last episode. So that's possible. I, she, so far, the only one that, uh, the only relationship Ted's been in where Barney seemed to be completely on board uh, was Natalie. And I think that Barney was on board with that, I could say, arguably, because he knew it was going to end. Like, he, was, he could just read the, the signs. Yeah. Um, he was like, no, it's like, I'll just put up with this for three weeks. It's probably all i got to put up with this for, and then Ted will be right back to being my wingman. Right, right. And, and Barney is back to wingmanning alone, as we'll see at the end of the episode. But uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Ted says, you guys have been like the parents that I still have, and in fact moved here to get away from. Please do not interrogate Victoria. Yeah, we've referenced that line before. I do like that. That uh, they are kind of like his parents from time to time, and the role switch, and sometimes he's like their parents. Right. Uh, he calls them the kids and stuff like that. But yeah, the the parents that I still have, and in fact, move here to get away from. <laughs> right. I always like that line. So, uh, what's Lily's conversation with Robin up at the bar about? Uh, she goes up and she asks if Robin's okay. Uh, and she said, you know, Robin says, why wouldn't I be, etc. Uh, I think Lily shows some character in that she supports Ted and is dating Victoria and yeah. tells him, that, like, I'm excited that she's going to be there. And I think she means it. I don't think she's being fake yeah. in any way. Uh, but she also supports Robin, knowing how Robin feels, by calling Victoria a bitch, even, <laughs> right. even if it's in jest. Well, talk about the face acting. Like, you could see on, on Allison's face, like, she really is excited that Victoria's going to become part of the group she wants. She likes Victoria. She wants Victoria to be in her house, but part of her friend group. And, but at the same time, you know, uh, she's thinking about Robin. It's like, how, how are you doing with this? Are you okay? Yeah, you can see on her face that like when, when Robin gets up from the table that she looks she looks concerned. We'll be mentioning quite a bit of the, the face acting tonight. So they get to game night, and Marshall explains the rules, and no one understands them, it, it seems. Right, uh... Victoria uh, has got like her hand in her mouth like she's try really trying to concentrate this reminds me of some of our game nights there's a one member of our group who is known for being the person who likes to explain the rules and uh, I wrote sometimes but I mean often I'm confused by new games like even after like this 20 minute tutorial that explains every possible scenario in the game it's like I, I, I don't know let's just Play it, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, there is a point to it where you kind of just have to get into it to, to see. You're like, oh, I see what you're saying. At this point in the game, you're supposed to do this. But uh, I think that uh, Barney is pretending to not understand the rules because later he correctly references a rule to change the subject. Yeah, yeah. He's um, If you notice, he's the only one not drinking alcohol. Like, he's slamming Red Bulls, which is another sort of Barneyism that hasn't really developed is that he, he has an affinity for energy drinks? He does, yeah. Doesn't come up a whole lot, but he does He does, uh, He does. does like them. Yeah, unless he's, like, poured alcohol through the tiny opening in the Red Bull. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah, like, he's he's up for, like, all night. Yeah. He's not, he's not drinking any alcohol, necessarily. So it turns out the game is just a ruse to interrogate Victoria, and it's implied that all the question cards are written for her, regardless of whose turn it is. Right. Uh, and one of the questions asks if Victoria has ever cheated. And she says she was in a bad relationship, kissed someone else, felt bad about it, and then broke up with her boyfriend the next day. Yeah, and you know, here we're going to talk about the face acting because this is a scene that's played in the looks mm -hmm. where uh, Ted gives Marshall a gesture, like, does that answer pass your test? And Lily looks at Marshall and gives us, like, I approve. You yeah. Know, it's it's like the judge and the uh, uh, counselors. Like, have, do you have we reached consensus? Yeah, yes, we have. We, we, we accept your answer, yes. Victoria. But I wonder if this is... Uh, judge Fudge. <laughs> I wonder if this is foreshadowing. Like, we're, like, Ted's relationship with Victoria later in the season is not going well, and he wants to hook up with Robin and then break up with Victoria the next day. Literally the story Victoria said she just did. Yeah. So Barney asks if Victoria ever re-returned to this guy. We get a little taste of the re-return. Yeah, and Ted has this look on his face like, Why? What did I do to you? And predictably, uh, 
maybe Marnie is playing the game because who? How else would Victoria answer that except say what? Right. Which is eh, against yeah. the rules. And then yes, yeah, just just a drink. So at this point, Lily mentions to Barney that she went to a party with a what was it like a Sharon? Shan- 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? How did she get invited to this party that a uh, former sh- granola girl turned sugar baby turned mom? Uh, maybe maybe sh- her kid is like a kindergartner. Or oh, kindergarten. yeah, it could be. I actually hadn't even hadn't even thought of that. I. It didn't even occur to me to ask questions yeah, about this what, one. What parties is Lily going to that no one else is invited to? That, that's a good point. You know, I try to analyze everything on the show, and that one just went, like, right over my head. Like, oh, Lily got invited to a party. Yeah. <laughs> 30-year fixed mortgage. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, like, why would she be there? Like, Shannon probably doesn't have a whole lot of parties at her place with Max running around. Yeah. Why does Shannon keep this tape for eight years and then give it to a stranger? Man, you were really thinking about yeah, this one. <laughs> yeah, All right. So moving on. Yeah, so because we're going to have to, because those questions aren't going to get answered. Because yeah. they didn't think about that no. enough, apparently. So it's Robin's turn in Marsh Gammon, and she rolls. She looks excited, but uh, because and, of what she rolled, and mostly that Marshall is making up the rules as he goes, uh, the question goes to Victoria again. Right, right. Uh, the question is, how many boyfriends did you have before you met Ted? And here I want to point out that Robin looks sad. Like, she's got this, like, Victoria gets the guy that I want, and now she gets my turn in this game, too, kind of look on her face. Like, she's defeated. Like, she was happy. She wanted to play this game, and she's being, like, you know, cast aside for the new woman. She, she's like the older child when the baby comes. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's what, she, that's what she looks like. Yeah. So the answer is two. Robin uses this information to call Victoria prude, and then she said, well, only two serious boyfriends. I dated a lot of other guys. And then Robin says, slut. Slut alert. Yeah. And everyone looks confused by her name calling. Uh, Victoria's pretty flustered by it. She yeah. like loses her train of thought and can't quite get her sentence out. Marshall gives her a dirty look. Uh, and then when Robin calls her a slut, Ted gives her like a confused look. Like, what? That's so rude. Yeah, like, why would, What? Like yeah. that's, it's, it seems out of character for her, which it is. Yeah, uh, it, it, it is. It's, it's uncalled for, it's petty, it is out of character. But, and, and that's why I think it's still shocking to me to hear those words come out of her mouth, uh, even though I've seen this episode a dozen times. Like, knowing everything we do about her our whole life, it seems that Ted and Victoria together really gets to Robin. Yes, yeah. I feel like... Robin was okay with Ted and Victoria the second time around. Well, she was also dating somebody else. Yeah. She was with, um... The really dumb guy? It yeah. turned out he was really dumb. Chef, chef, chef dum, dum, dum. <laughs> yes. Chef dum, dum on the Vespa. <laughs> oh, yes, he had a Vespa, too. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah. About this tape that Shannon's been keeping for eight years and gave to a stranger... Lily comes from her room, presumably with the tape, hands it to Barney. Barney goes into the uh, kitchen and smashes it off screen. Yeah, and I like the uh, the film shooting through the air. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice touch. Yeah, it reminds me of a cartoon, like, where you, you don't see the destruction, but you see debris falling into the frame from off screen. It's, it's, a, it's a technique to imply wanton destruction that would be better in your imagination than anything they could film. Right, and then so they didn't. Uh, turns out it's a fake tape. Lily pulls out the real tape, and uh, Ted actually restrains Barney uh, to an extent so that they can watch the tape. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not a fake tape. It's Ted's graduation. Well, right. I mean, it's it's not the tape that Barney has. <laughs> what I mean Ted. by fake tape? No, it's a real tape that yeah. had stuff on it that Ted might have cared about. He doesn't actually care for very <laughs> yes. long, though, because he wants to see what's on this tape so bad. Yeah. But I mean, Barney's been busting his apple bag all night, so... <laughs> yeah. I think he kind of wants to get back at Barney, at least a little bit. Yeah. So Ted's doing the like the basketball player block so that Barney can't get to the VCR. And once the tape starts, Barney lets it go for a few seconds. And what we see on screen is Barney as a hippie. He's got the ponytail. He's got the goatee. He's got uh, like hair draping in his face. He's, he's blubbering and talking about how he loves Shannon. And then the singing starts. Yeah, it's it's heartfelt, but it seems so corny. But 
And what's sad about that is that I think that that's like the raw, genuine pre-transformation Barney. Yeah. I think that's like that is who he was at a time, and so it's like it's it's sad that it seems so corny, but I I think that's who he was. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, upon repeated viewing, I could see this as a genuine expression of Barney's lowest point in his life, like completely emotionally bankrupt, just blubbering like a baby like i have no self-respect left i just everything i have i'm just pouring out of me yeah 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 it ever been like that uh yeah but i don't think i filmed it no no (laughs) i would i would not either and and i wouldn't have given them the satisfaction of sending it to them absolutely not no they don't get that what imagine you're shannon and you get that tape are you gonna be like oh i'm so hot for him right no 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 doesn't work guys so once he gets really into the song, Barney ejects the tape and storms out of the apartment. And at this point, no one tries to stop him. Yeah, and this is kind of like a, a little bit of a tonal shift because it's all been laughs and gags. But he gets up and he leaves the scene silently. And they yeah. kind of hold on that silence for a moment. Like, and, and they talk about face acting. They show everyone's shocked face. Like, oh God, we've gone too far. So I, I, I like that they, they put a little bit of emotional beat there. So, uh, again, talking about the faces, uh, this seems to be the theme of the episode. I like Victoria's face here while the video is playing and after Barney storms out. Because she was really excited to see what was on the tape, just like everyone else. But after it starts, she's got this look on her face like she wishes she had stopped it from happening. But she doesn't know everyone well enough to intervene. Mm -hmm. Uh, And after Barney leaves, she looks really sad and regretful. Like she should have done something different. Yeah, yeah, everyone has an expression on their face uh, the, the, of, like, shock and, and uh, regret, uh, except for Robin. Robin looks excited that the attention is on someone else other than Victoria. I didn't, oh, that's funny. Yeah. I actually didn't notice Robin's face. Yeah. Because the, the other one that, I mean, is really obvious to me when I was watching it besides Victoria's was Lily's, which wasn't a regret at all, uh, in my opinion, but, like, like shock, like, like, she had no idea, you know, it'd give it a million years that this kind of thing would ever happen. Yeah. Uh, that Barney would have, yeah, like a hippie granola crying video. Yes. They have that emotional moment where he storms out, and that's the commercial break. And when they come back, they've head down to the bar to start drinking since the game has been interrupted. Yeah. We don't know exactly how long it's been, but it doesn't feel like it's been a really long time to no. me. And I don't think that's just because of the cut. Uh, but they determine that Barney is off the grid exactly when he shows up. Yeah. So he shows up, they apologize, but in the same breath, Lily's like, got to tell us what's on that tape. So maybe that leads more evidence to your opinion that, that she she wasn't really regretful as much as she, she was shocked. Yeah, she wants to know, inquiring minds. So Barney asks them to share their most embarrassing stories to see how they compare to his most embarrassing stories. He does say that this is the most embarrassing thing. Like you said, this is the lowest point in his life, and he decided to film it. Good job, Barney. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is his most embarrassing moment in his life, and so they have to uh, make offerings to him. Yeah, so, so the second two acts of the episode is this framing device of them sharing embarrassing stories. Marshall's story is he goes to Lily's kindergarten, and he has to take a pee in one of those tiny little kindergartner toilets, so he sits down on it. I don't know if I would do that. I probably would have gone and tried to find another bathroom. Oh, yeah, that, that's probably a better idea. But uh, apparently, I'm guessing he's called Punny Butt because the tiny toilet made an impression on his huge butt. And so that when he waddles out into the uh, classroom... Okay, so it looks like he's got a funny butt. Actually, I never thought of that before. I actually just thought it was the, the only thing that they could see, and they just latched onto the butt part. But, yeah, the reason why it would be funny is because it would have made, yeah, like a red ring around around his tush. <laughs> so, yeah, that could be why, why he's called funny butt. So Barney is satisfied with the story, and he starts telling his own. Uh, it was 1998. And he was working at a coffee shop with his college girlfriend, Shannon. So it's uh, right after college, it seems. Uh, he doesn't wear suits. He respects women. He does say bro, but he's not into high-fiving. Uh, he sings. He has a zine instead of a blog. Uh, I think 98 predated blogs, I would guess. Uh, yeah. 
is in a committed monogamous relationship. Uh, he seems to absorb a bunch of different religions uh, and like spiritual philosophies and things like that. Uh, he wants to join the Peace Corps and serve his fellow human beings that are less fortunate. And uh, he's about as far from the Barney that we know as possible. You forgot to mention a celibate relationship as well. I did not mention that. Um, yeah, I, that's. I guess that's uh, again uh, just one more way that it's the furthest from from Barney that we could we could imagine him being. Yeah, and and we know a lot about Barney because we've heard his whole life story by watching the entire series. And this is just one of Barney's transformations. Like later in the series, we get to see his transformation from player Barney to married Barney to father Barney. But uh, here, here he transforms from hippie Barney to suit Barney. And in his childhood, he was really into magic. None of the other kids really liked him. So there had to be some sort of transformation, I think, between that kid Barney and what we see as granola Barney. Yeah, there would have to be. We don't know what that one is. Yeah. I, like to, I can't think of anything specific that would, that would uh, get him there. Um, other than that, I could see that the, the kid that he was growing up into that uh, granola Barney anyway. If that's who he was, he just, he wasn't liked, like you said, he liked magic, um, you know, and then just as he was in college, it, like, he was introduced to different ideas, and like I said, like, he has all these spiritual ideas um, that he talks about in his scene, and that he has, like, in his, you know, in his life. Um, I could see him just making a natural transition from childhood into that guy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of his customers is Greg. Greg shows up and uh, changes Barney's life. He compliments Barney on Shannon's appearance and asks him, Are you nailing that? Are you nailing it? Are you sticking it to her? <laughs> so when Greg holds up his hand for a high five, it, it actually made me uncomfortable when Barney left him hanging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, on, on the other hand, though, it made me more uncomfortable when Barney was telling Greg that women aren't objects and Greg is laughing and completely dismissive of that idea that women are human beings. Like, go back and look at his face. Yes. He's, like, he's like, yeah, right. This is awesome. This guy's telling me that women are humans. It's, uh, something happened in his life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's got a sad story. Um, but uh, that's when we get a Gregism that becomes a Barneyism. Open your knowledge basket, because here it comes. Forget all the touchy feel crap. You get money, you get laid. End of discussion. And he gets a peace out, hombre. Yeah. So the uh, in a discussion thing is kind of like the Greg version of Barney's I have one rule. Right. I have one rule. You get money, you get laid. And end of discussion is what Greg says. Yeah. So uh, Barney, he's dismissive of the whole interaction. Yeah, just another customer. And uh, you know what? This coffee shop... I how have we not talked about it yet? This looks an awful lot like the coffee shop from Friends. It does. Um, I didn't really think about it because it only appears in this one episode. Uh, but yeah, you've got the singing corner yeah. on the right mm -hmm. uh, by the door. Big window. Yeah, right. In, yeah, in the, big, in the big window area. I mean, uh, there's no couch. That's true. Um, but yeah, then you've got the, the counter on the left inside of the screen. Yeah, it, it looks no a lot Gunther. like third. Yes. No, that'd be Barney. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Barney's Gunther. But yeah, it's it's um, 1998, so it really fits into that um, that era well. Barney skips to five weeks later, and he's outside. He's got his Peace Corps backpack on. He's ready to go to Nicaragua, but uh, Shannon doesn't show up. Yeah, and apparently he's going to walk there. He's going to uh, walk to uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Because, uh, uh, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know how he's planning on getting there, but he's wearing his backpack, like, right now. Right, yeah. Uh, so, hold on a second. Barney and Ted can both play the piano? I mean, I'm happy that I got to hear them sing For the Longest Time by Billy Joel in the Time Traveler episode, but how did we not have Ted and Barney play Heart and Soul on a giant electric piano mat, all of the movie big? It's... It's one of their greatest failures. I think so. So uh, Barney starts to get cold feet on telling the story to the gang. So the rest uh, of the gang has to uh, tell embarrassing stories to get more pieces of Barney's. Yeah, and I'll say like his delivery here, it almost sounds like I can't tell if he's being sincere or he's just fishing for more information. Like, 
He's like, I don't know, guys, if I should tell the story. Like, at first, he was like, it's the most embarrassing that ever happened to me. And so Marshall tells a pee story. And he's like, oh, okay, well, here's what happened. That first part of the story seems like the more humiliating part. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I, I, I would think that I mean, when I was watching it, or at least on a rewatch, I would say that uh, Barney, I would speculate, is definitely uh, just pretending that he doesn't feel like going on because he just, he, he's already going to tell them. Yeah. But he wants to hear every story culminating in getting the re-return. The thing that he wanted more than anything this night yeah. is to get uh, Ted to tell the re-return. But Barney seems like the kind of guy who would have made the decision to tell everyone before he walked into the bar. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what that's what I think happened. So the story continues when Marshall pulls out a game board spinner to determine who's going to tell the next story. It lands on Robin. So Robin starts telling the slipped-in horse poop story from... Uh, Purple giraffe. Right. Yes. We, we already we already know that one. Yeah, we already know that one. So Victoria usurps her. Yep. And uh, she tells a a uh, story that involves a game of truth or dare, a squeezed bottle of marshmallow ice cream topping, and the hot tub at her grandparents' retirement community. And while I want to hear this story, we never do. I I, I would you like to hear some speculation? I. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't. It doesn't sound like you do. <laughs> Why don't you tell us anyway? Well, that uh, squeeze bottle of marshmallow ice cream topping. Yes. It's white. Yep. And you squirt it out, it makes a rope shape. And then there's a hot tub, and things float in that. And then somebody walks out, mm-hmm. and her grandparents walk out. Yes, she gets caught. See- we assume she gets caught by her parents or, or someone else. Right. And she's covered in, in marshmallow ice cream topping. Yeah. Yeah, that, that probably would do it. So the story seems to win points with everyone except Robin. Uh, Marshall's impressed that she volunteered, and then after hearing it, thinks it's the greatest story ever. Uh, Robin looks bored and actually maybe a little pissed that Victoria is even talking or existing. Yeah, yeah. Again, Robin is eclipsed by the younger, hotter model. Oh, dang, dang. <laughs> I, I, I'm referencing... I'm referencing uh, uh, when she's eclipsed later by Becky at the Worldwide News. Ah, boats, boats, boats. Boats, yeah. Barney's story continues. He goes back to the coffee shop, and Shannon tells him that her dad won't let her go to Nicaragua. So Barney leaves, uh, apparently to walk to Nicaragua again, but he changes his mind, and he heads back to the coffee shop to talk to Shannon's dad. Yeah, and when he shows up, Shannon and her dad are having a conversation. Her dad's back is to us, and then after a second or two, they lean over the table and start making out. Yeah, at this point, the gang shouts, what? What? And then Marshall hits the taboo buzzer. Dang. And says, now everyone has to drink. Right. So that's a good point, as any, to end that act. <laughs> right. So Barney continues to get cold feet, like we talked about, mm-hmm. you know, to fish for more stories, probably. Um, yeah, he's, he's trying to get to, to the re-return. Yes. He, he knows it's going to take a couple more. Plus, he can drag this out as long as he wants to. Well, oh, this next part of the story, you know, if you tell me an embarrassing story and you only get uh, two minutes. Yeah. He's, he's going to drag it out until he gets the re-return. Yeah, so Lily volunteers an embarrassing story where Marshall and Lily have floor sex while Marshall's mom listens on the phone the whole time. The whole time. At least we know it wasn't that long. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marshall Marshall gets things done quickly. Yeah, the only way I know how. The only way I know how. So, I wonder if this was, like, right after they got engaged, because they were doing it a lot back then. Yeah, that uh, that was made clear in the the, the Purple Giraffe episode, mm-hmm. where she's, like, twisting the ring around her finger and giving him the, the sexy eyes. So Barney continues his story, and it turns out it wasn't Shannon's dad, it's Greg. But we don't know who Greg is yet. So Shannon breaks up with Barney, and it affects him in a pretty normal breakup way Mm -hmm. so far. Yeah. And I'd say, it feels like Shannon's pretty callous in the way she breaks up with him. She, She had planned on just ghosting out on him, like when he was in Nicaragua, just like, I'm guessing, not contacting him, and then hoping that two years later when he shows up, he'd forgotten about her. It's, it's right. not, not very compassionate dumping. No, no, it's not. 
it, it's almost like she made that decision a while ago, but... She did have five weeks to make the decision. Yeah, you know, she, she was done with her hippie granola life and ready to become a New York socialite slash sugar baby. Right. Yeah, that's true. So, in that very normal breakup way, he uh, records a video telling her how much he loves her, and, uh, and then he sends her the tape, and then uh, he mopes around for a week. Yeah, that's all normal. It's not like he changed his entire life to emulate the man who stole his girlfriend. So a week after they broke up, Shannon comes back for her final paycheck. Uh, and I want to point out here that she is wearing a suit. She has already changed. Mm-hmm. And Greg's there too. He's the man that uh, Shannon left Barney for. And uh, they both mock Barney's video. Yeah, Shannon tries not to laugh at first, but she can't hold it back after a while. And uh, this is where Barney snaps. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if this was bad acting on, on Shannon's part, or if she was trying to play it like she didn't really want to laugh in Barney's face, but sort of mocked laugh to, to gain Greg's favor. I, I can't really tell. Uh, it could be. Barney's humiliated beyond anything he's experienced so far, which is saying something looking at his childhood. So, no more normal breakup. Barney changes his entire life to emulate the man who stole his girlfriend. Right, and he's wandering around Manhattan, crying, he's looking for meaning, and he gets handed a flyer for a suit sale, and it says, Suit up! And then we get the memorable transformation scene. Barney cuts off his ponytail, he shaves his goatee, he suits up, and by the time he's done, he looks sharper than all other men. And the towel is removed, and he stands up, adjusts his tie, winks, and then walks into the camera. Yeah, he's, he's dressed all in black, like that one Star Wars character. <laughs> right. So back at the booth, after Barney's talked about his transformation, he gets a little bit of sympathy, and then he says that he saw Shannon again. And someone says, when? <laughs> and I love this bit. Marshall hits the uh, the taboo buzzer, because he, he hears a W word, and he's like, ah, no, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I, I just thought that was like a, a little... It's fun a writing. element of realism. Yeah, like, that, that actually happened. You can actually have a friend who would do that. Whoever thought of that in the writer's room, I think, gets, gets props. Gets a gold star. That's right. So, to give the last part of Barney's story, Barney shames Ted into telling the story of the re-return. Right, but he wants to give the green testicle story instead. Yes. <laughs> I love you know, this bit. There's a great DVD outtake. Uh, where they, they just, they're struggling to get through this scene, and I think Radner says in the outtake, ah, yes, the green testicle story. So I was playing Ultimate Frisbee in college, and there's this one guy with weirdly shaped testicles. Oh, I supposed to be toenails? Yeah. <laughs> and how would he necessarily know that? Yes. <laughs> Why is that important? That's a totally different story. And, yeah, and how would that be embarrassing for Ted? Sounds like it's <laughs> embarrassing for the other guy. Yeah, you should have those looked at. <laughs> so, no, he has to tell the re-return, and Robin finally looks happy in this episode. Yeah. We, we get a flashback to the re-return, and uh, Ranjit's there. Even he looks drunk. The, all, uh, he, Barney, and Ted, they're all there after Marshall and Lily went to bed, presumably. They're getting drunk. Yeah, I, I hope maybe they called another cab driver to, to go do the re-return. It, it, you know, they don't mention it, and I'm a little sad that they didn't, so I'm going to decide that uh, this is endorsement of drunk driving by How I Met Your Mother. I, I wouldn't necessarily go that direction. <laughs> I'm kidding. But it's, yeah, it's, it's not the only time that the show mentions it, though, because, well, I mean, there's another episode where Lily says that she was uh, telling a police officer that she couldn't walk the straight line even when she was sober, which means that she'd gotten pulled over and failed a, you know, field sobriety test. Yeah. So, the show does joke about alcohol sometimes in some gray areas. So, um, the story of the re-return is basically Ted goes back to Robin's apartment. Now we're assuming 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m.? Yeah, I don't really know when McLaren's closes, but it could be a 4 a.m. bar. But yeah, so it, it could be a 4 a.m. bar, so they get to Robin's at 5, and she's up already to do the news, we assume. Yeah, I don't really say, say why. Yeah, she could be. She's had a long night. I would, I would think she would have crashed out pretty hard. Yeah. But yeah, maybe she has to get up early to do the news. Well, he rings the bell. <laughs> so, I mean... You Does know. he? Oh, okay. 
Oh no, maybe maybe he didn't. Uh, yeah. But he does. Uh, he does Ralph and run. Yeah, yeah. So he pukes on her customized Shabatsky doormat, leaves, and she's left with a nasty surprise. Yeah. So Victoria isn't really thrilled with the story of the re-return. Yeah, but Robin's happy. She's getting some attention. And Barney's happy now that he's gotten what he wanted. He tells Ted that he shouldn't have told the story of the re-return. He does finish the uh, Barney story. Right. So after Barney took the tape out of the VCR, he went to see Shannon. Because uh, Lily had told him what billed him. I, I, this is where I thought about stuff, not as much as you were about this this whole Shannon story. But uh, I was thinking, like, he knows the building. Yeah. But he doesn't know which apartment. So, like, did he knock on every single one of them or, like, ask the doorman? I mean, I don't know how he got the information, but he finds out where Shannon lives. Yeah, I thought that was kind of creepy that he knew where his ex-girlfriend from eight years ago lived, what apartment, and that he could get into the building. But maybe he just bribed his way in. It could be. He does have crazy, stupid money. Yeah. We just didn't get to see that. So, uh, Barney and Shannon catch up uh, about the last eight years. And then he nails her. He does. Yeah, he does. Um, finally nailed Shannon. Finally nailed Shannon. That's, so that's, that's actually became a, uh, a chant for when I accomplished something. Yes, I finally nailed Shannon. There's, wow. there's, and there's, there's no Shannon. Right, there's yes. There's no sex. It's like, right, yeah. Thank I, you. I beat that level in Super Mario. Okay. I finally nailed her. So Barney has this moment where it seems like he wishes his life was different. That it seems like he wishes that he was the father of Shannon's baby, uh, named Max, of all things. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tracy's dead boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he says that his current life is awesome and having a kid would be terrible. And uh, the, the funny thing is that what we know of Barney is that he would have probably been happy. Uh, maybe not where he's at right now. Mm-hmm. But it's the moment that Barney sees his daughter that his life changes for the last time that we get to see. Yeah. Um, so I imagine the same thing would have happened if he had uh, had Max, if Max was his kid with Shannon. I don't know if um, younger Barney would have been ready for that. Um, but maybe if things had gone differently, if, if Shannon had actually gone to Nicaragua with, uh, with him and they'd spent you know, two years together... Uh, they both experienced this this transformative experience of working with uh, people in a, another country who have so little, and then you come back to New York City. I, I think that would have definitely been a transformative experience for them regardless, and, and maybe uh, he would have been ready to take care of someone else, another human being at that point. Okay. But that's another parallel universe yep. episode. It didn't happen. Because Greg, well, I bet Shannon would have left anyway. Like you said, it sounded like she was planning that at least for a little while. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, if Greg hadn't walked in there, that everything would have been different, but probably not. So so Barney wins game night, but what yeah. what wins game night? Is it is it the fact that he finally nailed Shannon, or is it the fact that he took a video of it and showed it to the group? I think it's the latter. Yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. He also even tricks her in, uh, you know, very Barney style. He's like, oh, no, it takes a while for this to power down. So he's, like, holding the phone <laughs> over the activity yes. that's happening, and she's not, uh, she must be naive enough to, to not uh, believe that he's taking a video of that moment right there. Uh, but, yeah, actually, yeah, that's, that phone taking video, it would probably have been an expensive phone for 2006 to take video and to take video of any kind of quality that the gang would be able to see what was going on. Yeah, it's not the last time that he videotaped uh, women he had sex with without their knowledge. Yeah, that is illegal. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. Not not legal, or a good idea. Right. Or a nice thing to do. No. So, what what's, what's Barney going to do now? He says, peace out, hombres, and he leaves the bar. What's or, the rest of his night? Or night does he? Doesn't he, uh, doesn't he just keep... Well, he gets up from the table, and I, and I assumed he left the bar, but we see him later still at the bar. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, did he take a victory lap? Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, go outside and take, take a lap. Maybe got a cigar or something. Yeah. The um, This episode ends with a bit of a coda, uh, so sort of wrapping up how all the characters are. And then I think it's kind of touching, like, the, the stories that they tell are embarrassing, but they're 
part of their lives now. They've been shared. They've become less hurtful and more fortifying. The kindergartner's art, the fake vomit, they remind Ted and Marshall that someone cares about them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, when Marshall says to Barney, he's like, well, sometimes talking about it can help. When he says that, I, I was thinking, like, like, no, that's what you say when you want to hear somebody's embarrassing story. No, it doesn't, Marshall, <laughs> you jerk. You just want to hear Barney's story. But actually, in by the time we get to the end of the episode, I think that, that is true, that uh, uh, whether Marshall just wanted to say that to get you know Barney's story or not, it turns out that sharing that stuff uh, gets it off your chest. It, it no longer has power over yeah. you when other people have the story. Right. Barney, in contrast, uh, his his last scenes in the episode are him trying to pick up women at the bar. Again, sans wingman. Right, because, yeah, Ted's still with Victoria. He can't drink. Yeah. Because he's pregnant. He's just, he's the woman. <laughs> um, did you notice that, uh, you could barely hear it, but Barney tries the $100, I say, wow, when you turn around, that pickup line? Yep. Yep. I did. I did hear that, and I was like, "Wow, that's." Uh, I mean, it's just like Barney to try something uh, over and over and over again to figure out how to improve on it and make it the best possible pickup line that he can. So it's not surprising, but it is interesting that he uses the exact same one. Possibly, he doesn't need a, a wingman for that one because he can just look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, he figured that one out thanks to Robin. So that's it for Granola Barney in this episode, but he does come back in. The season three, episode ten, called the Yeps, and it, it you get a little bit more of a exposure to Barney immediately after the breakup. He's on the couch again. He's wearing the hippie outfit. He's crying and, and he's talking to his brother, who's like this big dude, bro. Yes, he's got the beer helmet on, and uh, yeah, he's talking about how he has sex, but he doesn't really like it. Uh, the he thinks about baseball players, yeah. and that makes it go much faster. Yeah, the thought of being with a woman, it's just, that's just disgusting. The thing of putting my thing down there? Ew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ashley Williams was in this one again. Yes, she was. Yep. She played Victoria. I, I know. <laughs> uh, Katie Walder played Shannon. She would return three times, once uncredited. She, you might know her, Chris, from your favorite show, Gilmore Girls. She played uh, Janet Billings. What? What? What just happened? <laughs> hey, that's not your favorite show? <laughs> Gil- oh, man. I probably could count the number of episodes of Gilmore Girls I've seen on one hand. Oh. Mark Derwin plays Greg, otherwise known as Captain Harvey Pounds. What a terrible name. In the Amazon series Bosch. Okay. And he'll come back because uh, Barney plans a uh, several year long revenge. Yes, he does. Scheme. Uh, Susie Plaxton uh, plays Judy Erickson. No lines. Nope. She, on screen, I, I don't know if they just filmed that at another time or if they brought her. I'd be embarrassed to go in. To be filmed for five seconds holding a phone in my face. I would be excited. Okay. And it's elated, ecstatic. I get paid? Well, I suppose sit there true. and hold the phone? Yeah, because yeah, she doesn't have any lines and no. still gets the credit. We got Marshall Manesh as Ranjit. Uh, fun fact, uh, Marshall Manesh does not drink alcohol. Right. Funny that he was staggering yeah. out of the bar. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time we get to look at uh, Barney's past. It's also the first time that Victoria is a part of the gang. We continue to see later in the series that Barney will videotape his sex partners without their consent. I believe this is the first time he's done that, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Don't don't do that. Um, Mayonnaise being a part of Judy's cooking is a continuation from the belly full of turkey. I kind of want to get that recipe because, I don't know, is it like a, a tablespoon of mayonnaise and a whole batch of cookies... Or is it, like, four cups of mayonnaise and a batch of cookies? Right. I mean, mayonnaise and cookies in the right amount would be delicious. Yeah. It would make them very, very creamy. Uh, let's see. Get another split screen with uh, Judy Erickson, as we mentioned. Yep. And you talked about the, the cartoony Barney destroying the tape off screen because what you imagine is better than what they could possibly have filmed. Yep. So the character motivations... 
I, I felt like Ted was worried that Victoria would break up with him if she finds out that he used to have the hots for Robin, so he keeps it from her instead of coming clean. Yeah, I don't know if he was afraid that she would break up with him. Maybe he was afraid that she would ask the perfectly reasonable question, like, why are you hanging out with her? You know, the question that she asks later. Yes. It's, uh, Several years down the road. Uh, maybe Ted's just just afraid of any sort of confrontation at this point. Well, that's true. And yeah. we do know that he, yeah, he doesn't like confrontation of any kind. Yeah. Probably avoid that. Probably be, he would avoid being asked about confrontation. Yes. So Robin passive aggressively disses Victoria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lily has uh, got her loyalty split between Robin and Victoria in this episode. Not a whole lot to say, really, because except for Barney, all these characters don't have a lot of lines. They're right. like you said, they're acting with their face. Yeah. So Marshall uses his game to interrogate Victoria. Uh, so that he can, you know, do it subtly and no one will pick up on it. Yeah, it's very, very clever. Marshall is a master of subtlety. Mm -hmm. uh, Barney, meanwhile, it's obviously, it's his show. I don't know if he wants to teach Ted a lesson about asking Barney. You don't ask Barney to be on his best behavior. That's that's one lesson, I guess. Or, or if he's trying to teach Ted about sharing humiliating stories or just being honest with Victoria. Or if he's just busting his act. Applebag. It could be. You know, I just uh, thought of a parallel between this and the episode where Barney brings Nora to the bar and he tells everyone that they are not allowed to embarrass him mm. and that if they do, that he will bring up their most embarrassing story, which he has a new one for each of them beyond what we've heard in this episode. Right. So it has two parallels there. It's the don't embarrass me in front of my new girlfriend and getting or using dirt on on the rest of the gang. Uh, Victoria, this is her first time in the group, so she kind of wants to make a good impression. Again, not a lot of lines, but you can kind of tell from, from her, her face acting and her body language. So Chris, do you have a life lesson for this week? I do. When you're starting a new relationship, if there's something that you want to keep from the other person, you should probably tell them instead. Because they'll find out anyway... And it'll be better if they hear it from you or hear it from you voluntarily when maybe your friends aren't around. Yeah. It's definitely not the way that you want to find out that your new girlfriend is a mermaid <laughs> with that bottom half fish. Bottom half fish? Well, that's the that's that's the kind that I would prefer. Yeah. <laughs> the top half fish. I think I'd notice that. <laughs> So that's how we feel about this episode. How do you guys feel about this episode? You can let us know what you think by emailing us at himiumsuperfans at gmail.com. Each week, James and I get so much out of discussing the episode. We really enjoy doing this, and we hope you enjoy it, and we hope you share it. Please join our Facebook group. That's facebook.com slash groups slash himiumsuperfans, and leave us a message there. If you like the show, the best way to help us out is to give us a five-star rating on iTunes. You don't have to write a review. Yeah, in fact, use that to review a made-up video game, like Slap the Face. <laughs> and give us that five stars. It really helps us with getting discovered, and helps us grow our audience so we can keep making the show. And please, tell your friends, join our Facebook group. You can even tweet at us. You can tweet at me. Tweet all over me. It's... <laughs> Obsessed with tweeting. It's it's uh you tweet at me at himium underscore James. That's where his, that's where his tweet is. Yeah. You can see my tweet from there. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs>